today I have a man you know I respect and I love so well and um, I respect him a lot uh, he has he has this heart for people uh, he's one person among other that I know that he wants you to succeed by all means and that's I love about him and um, I've had the privilege to also um, glean from the wealth of wisdom that he carries. I'm sure most of us that were here yesterday, uh, you will agree with me that he's an encyclopedia, right? <laughs> Amen. So Dr. Lan Gregory Jiwala is the founder and lead pastor of the City Light International Assembly Network of Churches based in Chicago. He's also the CEO of the affiliated not-for-profit, the Life Development Center. He's also facilitates the Leading Light Network, a training and mentoring network of value-granted leaders with nurses in several nations. He has an undergraduate degree in electric engineering, a master in urban study from Moody Theological Seminary, and a PhD in organizational leadership from Chicago School of Professional Psychology. Gregory was also the fellow, was also the fellow of the Black Church in Leaders program at the uh, Martin, Martin Center for the Public Understanding of Religion at the University of Chicago Divinity School. He, he is passionate about purposeful and maximized living, missions and church system, innovations, community transformation, and leadership. He has written extensively on this and other subjects and speak frequently on them internationally at various gatherings. Gregory Lan is married to Debor, who serve alongside him. They are blessed with three children, Jesse, Joshua, and Pearl. With Jesus' joy, in our heart this morning. Please join me as we welcome Dr. Lan. Thank you so much, Pastor Wilson, Pastor Essia. Thank you for having me and thank you, Gathering of the Saints, for the privilege and the honor to be here this morning. Uh, can we all please appreciate the set man, set woman of the house, the visionary of the house. Come on, we've we got to do better than that. <laughs> yep. Thank God. You know, I usually tell people, I say, when God gives his gifts, you know, they come to you in human form. Yeah, he said he gave gifts unto men. So these are gifts that God has given to us, not just to your church but to our city, and you know, I was talking about how we met and talked. It has been a blessing to me too. You know, anytime I see, you know, and I think we've talked about, any, you know me about that, like anytime I see anyone who receives a vision from God and nothing is present, and that person takes that and begins to work with it, no matter the challenge and all. That's what I saw in him the first time we met. I saw a visionary. You know, this, this man has something. You know, if you had met God before he created the world, you wouldn't have seen anything. But, right? So, you know, when you meet people, you need to know that people have something that they carry. So I saw it. I saw, I saw his, you know, first of all, I saw his attitude to learn. Like he was always seeking to learn. He was, not, I mean, I've met some people that are very competitive, you know, I know if God has used him to do a lot of mighty stuff before he came to this place. But he just came into the city, and this is the vision God has given to me, and I want to learn everything, and I want to learn. And I see him learning from various places. I said, Mark that man. 
mark that man because God is going to use him to be a blessing to multitudes in this city. Pastor Wilson, Pastor, I said thank you guys for what you are doing in our city. Are we all ready for today? Yes. Are you sure you're ready? Yes. All right, so let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So we're talking about stand out. Very good, you guys got it. Stand out. Stand out. So, and that's what I want to talk about today. Now, I, I might, I'm going to be saying a whole lot of, I'm saying a whole lot of stuff, but I'll try and just compress, <laughs> to compress it, right? So we can expand on it, you know, some other time. So I'm just going to give you some quick, 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 quick points. So what I'm about to do today is what is called a character study. So it's a character study of scripture. And um, I'll tell you the character we're going to be studying. But what I'm trying to do is to extract some principles that personally, personally have helped me as a person, as a minister, and also which I believe will help anyone to be able to stand out wherever God has put them. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And the, t the title of my message today is Developing an excellent spirit. Everybody say after me, say developing, developing. An, excellent an excellent spirit. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the privilege to be here today. I thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak your word to your precious people in this assembly. I'm grateful for what you have been doing in this assembly, and I'm thankful for this conference, what you began to do yesterday. And thank you, Lord, for that which you have planned for today. Lord, we honor you. We pray that your purpose will be fully maximized in this place today. I ask you to give me wisdom, understanding, and utterance. Let my speech and my preaching not be with enticing words of man's wisdom, but let it be by the demonstration of your spirit and of your power, so that the faith of your precious people will not stand in the wisdom of a man, but will stand in the very power of God. I pray that through your word today, this church will be strengthened. The foundation will be further, further strengthened in the name of Jesus. Thank you because there will be a release of things that will continue to produce and produce, Lord, even in days and months and years to come, of your will and purpose for this ministry. Thank you for grace that is released upon every home here, upon every life here, and upon this church, Lord, that will take everyone to the next level in God's plans. Thank you, Father, Lord, because we will stand out for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. All right, so, so I'm talking about developing an excellent spirit, and I'm taking my main text from Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3. I'll be using the ESV, the English Standard Version, in case you have it. You can show it. If not, you can show whichever one. Um, Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3, it says, Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king, the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Talking about standing out. When a king looks at you and says, I'm going to set you over the whole kingdom. But what did they notice that Daniel possessed? They noticed that Daniel had what was called an excellent spirit. An ex and, that's, and that's a subject uh, of our discussion today. What is an excellent spirit? How do you develop an excellent spirit to stand out? But before I go into that, let's talk about the theme of the conference in a moment. So what does it mean to stand out? I want to make sure that I clarify that and make it very clear. What does it mean to stand out? Now, according to the dictionary, to stand out means to be much better than other similar things or people. This is Webster's. To be much better than other similar things or people. Another meaning is to be noticeable because of distinguishing features. To be noticeable because of distinguishing features. So, 
when you talk about something standing out, that thing is among a, a set of things. But that thing just becomes more noticeable because there are some unique things about it. So when something stands out or someone stands out, when you get into, for example, if something stands out in the room, when you get into the room, that's where your attention goes. Because it's just something that makes it different from every other thing. Now, I believe that that is God's plan for every one of us. That wherever he places us, whether he places us in a neighborhood, whether he places us in a city, whether he places us in a workplace, whether he places us in a sphere of influence, wherever God places us, God wants us to stand out, to stand out for him. And like I usually tell people, don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. So let's look at some things in scripture that solidify the fact that God wants us to stand out. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He's telling us believers there that we are chosen. Somebody say, I am chosen. I am chosen. Then the next thing he says, I am royal. I am, royal. I, am a I am a priest. I am a holy person. A holy person. Part of a holy nation. I'm a people of God's own possession. And it says the reason why God did that is that I may proclaim God's excellencies. God's excellencies. The God who called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. So God says that his purpose for you is that anywhere you find yourself, your life will proclaim God's excellencies. Can somebody imagine that? Can you imagine yourself proclaiming the excellencies of God in your business? Can you imagine yourself proclaiming the excellencies of God in your ministry? Can you imagine yourself proclaiming the excellencies of God in your family? Can you imagine your children proclaiming the excellencies of God? I want you to begin to imagine that because that's God's plan for you. That's God's plan for you. God does not want you to blend in. God does not want you to conform God does not want you to be like every other person. God created you uniquely, and he wants you to shine that uniqueness. Amen. Amen. Wow, is somebody getting, get, getting excited about that? Yes, sir. Now, look at, um, look at the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, starting from verse 14. Let's look at another, another one of those you know, promises of God. It says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. One thing about light is that they stand out anywhere. Like, do you get what I'm saying? A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hidden. He said, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. Everybody say, on a stand. In other words, light must be on the stand. And if you are the light, you must be on the stand. That means you must stand... Thank you. And it gives light to all that are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. So Jesus is giving us a command in this place. He's giving us an imperative in this place that we must let our light shine. Somebody point at yourself and say, I am not created to be hidden. I am not created to be obscure. I am not created to be under the table. I am a city set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. I am created to shine. I am created to be a light in my sphere of influence. My life is to proclaim the excellencies of God. Oh, how many of you are excited about that? 
I'm going to give you one more. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 14 to 16. Do all things without grumbling or complaining so that you may be blameless and innocent. Children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights. Amen. In the world, holding forth the word of life. It's a crooked and perverse generation, right? But God says, even in the midst of the crookedness, I want you all to shine as light. I want you all to stand out. Amen. Amen. I want you to stand out in this generation. I want you to show me in this generation. I want you to be an icon for me in this generation. Amen. Amen. I want you to be an icon. You know, one time I was studying the Bible, so in the Greek, and I saw that the word used for image, right, in the New Testament, is the word is the Greek word that's icon. When it says that we, you know, we this, the image of Christ and all that, the image there is the word icon. So I was like, wow, God actually wants me to be an icon for Him. You know, when you look at your phone, you see those things that stand out there. They are called icons, right? Right, so you press one to experience more of something. God says that the way He wants you to be is that when somebody comes in contact with you, they are pressing a part of God and they're experiencing a part of God. Amen. 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 That's what you were created to be. That's the reason why He left us in this world. That's the reason why He didn't just take us, He got born again, and then you are raptured and you go. That's why He left us here, so that we can be His representative, so that we can stand out for His glory. Do you all get that? Yes, sir. Amen. So now, disclaimer. Very good to put the disclaimer. To stand out does not mean to draw attention to ourselves, but to point attention to God. We are to be signs. You know, the way you see signs, right? When you look at signs on the road, right? That sign is there. It catches your attention. But if all the sign does is just to catch your attention but does not point attention to something else, then something is wrong. Then it's not fulfilling its purpose. So we're supposed to be signs that catches the attention of people. But then inscribed upon us is direction towards the real person. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 says, Be old, high, and the children whom the Lord hath given me we are for signs and for wonders in the land of Israel. Somebody say, I'm a sign. And I am a wonder. I am I'm created to shine, but to point to God. Are you guys getting it? So we point to God in our businesses as we shine. We point to God in our families as we shine. We point to God in, in whatever we do as we shine. That is the purpose of this. Amen. So now let's go to how do we stand out? How do we then stand out? How do we develop this excellent spirit that they said Daniel has? So what, I'm, what I want to do, which is the meat of what I want to share with you today, is I'm going to be giving you just eight principles to stand out. And for you to remember, I like people remembering things. I'm going to use the acronym stand out so that you can remember, remember it. All right? So just work, work, work with me with it. I want to show you what anyone can practice. Looking at the example of Daniel, we're going to be studying Daniel, and then we're going to learn how do I stand out where, anywhere God has put me. We're going to learn some of those basic universal principles for rising up to the place what, that God has called you to be and to stand and shine for his glory. Are you guys ready? Yes. All right. The S there in stand out, the S there in stand out is separation, study, and skillfulness. Separation, study, and what? Skillfulness. And skillfulness. All right, so let's look at it. Where do we see that? Daniel chapter 1, starting from verse 3. I'm going to read some things, and then we're going to bring it out. So Daniel stood out. So Daniel, the story of Daniel, the background was that Nebuchadnezzar came and conquered Judah, conquered Israel, took, destroyed everywhere, and took them captive. And then, while they were in Babylon, took them to another country in Babylon, and while they were in Babylon, they decided to pick some of the children 
of Israel, right? So that they can train them to be Babylonians. So they wanted to change their identity. They wanted to put something in them so that they, they forget where they came from, right? They even renamed them according to the, God, to the names of the God of Babylon. Now, so that's the, the context of it. So let's read from verse 3. Then the king commanded Asphenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of nobility, youth without blemish, good appearance and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding and learning, competent to start in the king's palace and to teach them the literature and the language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and of the wine which he drank. They were to be educated for three years and at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuch gave them names. He called them Bertitazah, Ananiah, he called Shadrach, Mishael, he called Meshach, and Azariah, he called Abednego. Now verse 8, everybody read verse 8 together with me. One, two, let's go. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief priest, the chief, sorry, the chief of the eunuchs, to what? To allow him not to defile. The first step in developing an excellent spirit is to choose it. Is to make a decision for it. That's the first step. The first step to standing out is to make a choice that I am not, I am not going to blend. I am not going to conform. I'm not going to just be among the people. They call a whole bunch of them, right? But Daniel says, I am going to be different. So the first step is a decision. You see, everything in this life, even everything that God is going to do in your life starts with a decision from you. Let's talk about how you get born again. Jesus Christ has already died on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ has already provided all that is needed for our redemption and our salvation. But still yet, we have to make a decision. Until we make a decision, that thing is never activated in our lives. In the same way, every other thing that God wants to do in your life is never activated until you decide. Until you decide and say, this is for me. This is what I'm going to be. This belongs to me in Christ. And I am not going to compromise. Daniel resolved in his heart. Do you know that many in this world, they have made an unconscious choice to be mediocres? Many people have decided that they will blend with the crowd. They just believe that some things are impossible. They've decided that they are limited by their background. They are limited by their race. They are limited by their color. They are limited by their education. They are limited by their exposure. They are limited by their connection. They made a decision. I remember when I first arrived in the United States uh, 21 years ago. So I came in, and then, you know, when you first come to the United States, you have counselors. <laughs> People that will come around you to counsel you that have been there for a long time. So I discovered, so I was, I was sent here because I was pastoring in Nigeria. I was doing well in Nigeria, but God said, come to this place, all right? So when I arrived in the city, people sat me down, and they began to tell me all kinds of things. Okay, well, you know, you go this way, you know, you just go like that, and da, 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 da. you know, they were all kinds of counsel, and the counsel basically was conform, just conform, be like how every other person had done it. I remember standing up there, and I said, no, I said, I did not come, in the, I did not come to this place. I wouldn't come to this place if, God, if I almost did not come. Until God said, you got to go. I will not come to this place if I'm just going to come here and just be like every other person. I said, I'm coming to this place to create things that don't exist before. I'm coming to this place to conquer. I'm coming to this place to represent God. I began to proclaim it. I said, I make that decision that I am not going to blend. I am not going to be just among the people. I am going to be who God has called me to be. And thank God for that decision. Because it's taking me through paths that is not, is the, sometimes it's the road less traveled. Do you get what I'm saying? It's taking me through paths that is the road less traveled. But I'm so grateful to God for that path. Because that path has led me 
to a place where I see God showing. A call, a people, a gathering of leaders in faith and in Christ, in commerce and industry, in sports and entertainment, in beauty and fashion, in government and in education, in spirit and in truth. We are moved with a passion and zeal for the lost and the hurting world. We are equipped to build bridges and raise platforms to society. We stress cultural relevancy and yet harmonize our diversity as we communicate by all means our message. We are gathering of the saints, raising leaders and rebuilding nations. In forth is glory. I'm using this to encourage anyone in this place. Maybe some, something is telling you. Maybe your financial level right now. Maybe your experience right now. Maybe what has happened in your past is telling you, oh, no, just settle. Just settle. You came here with a dream. You, 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 you've been in this city. There's a dream that God has given to you, but something is telling you, no, that's never going to happen. It's never going to come to pass anymore. It's too late for you. I'm here to challenge you. I'm here to encourage you. Gathering of the saints, that the dream is still alive. The dream is still alive. And I'm speaking to this entire church. The, the dream, Pastor Wilson, the dream of becoming a church that will influence a whole city is still alive. It's there. It is not impossible. All of you decide today, we will be that. Resolve. Speak about that business. I resolve that this business is just going to be like any other business. I resolve that my family is not just going to be like any other family. Resolve in your heart. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. But when you stand for something, then that which you stand for is what you are likely to get. Don't let the enemy tell you what if it doesn't happen. Tell the enemy what if it happens. Today, I'm encouraging you to make a decision. If you are writing, write it down today. Say, today, I make a decision that I will not conform. I will not be among the crowd. I'm going to stand out for God. I'm going to stand out for God. That's where it starts from. Hallelujah. So that's what Daniel did. And that's what began this entire story of this man that we have studied for centuries and millennia. It all started with a decision. It all started with a decision. He did not have two heads. Amen. Amen. He didn't have a cell phone. He didn't have a computer. He didn't have internet. He didn't even have the kind of education that some of us have here. But, but he had the same God that we have. Somebody say, I'll make a decision for excellence. Now, the next thing under that S, you know, Daniel did not just make the decision. Then the next thing, you know, I said, separation. So you separate yourself that I'm not just going to come from. And I said, study and skillfulness. So not only did Daniel separate himself from everyone, you will notice that over three years, Daniel began to study. He began to study Babylon. He went into the study of the languages. He began to learn as much as he could learn, and he began to develop his skills. And then they said later that when they were tested, out of all the people, the astrologers and the wise people, they said Daniel and his company were 10 times better. Somebody thought, thinks that oh, he only became 10 times better because God gave him a gift. I'll talk about the gift later, but no, not just because of the gift, but because of his study. I want to pause and say that. Listen, the next thing, when after you make a decision to stand out, then is to ask yourself, what does it take to stand out? You know, yesterday while we were doing the question and answer, I said something. I said, anytime you see anybody standing out, there's a body of knowledge behind him. There's something behind that thing. It's not because of just the person. There's something behind that person. And that thing that is behind that thing or that person can be obtained. So, the question is, whether it's a business, whether it's a ministry, whether it's a family, the next thing you need to do is you need to sit down and study what... I remember there was a time we met with Bishop Boye Depo and he told us, he was, you know, and he's, he's, he was telling us something about how he reads books. He said, when I read, when I read books, he said, a lot of people read the... They read the letter. He said, he said, when I'm reading book, I am going, books, I'm going to find out what is the spirit, what was the spirit behind the person who was writing it. 
what was the intent? He said, I read it on a second level. So he said, when you, when you study, when you bring, bring, bring a book, when you study, first of all, it's the principle that is there. But then he said, there's a spirit behind that principle. He said, read both. Read what? Both. both. So I'm giving you a secret. So if, you, if there's an area where you feel that God has called you to stand out for his glory, find people who have stood out in that area and settle down with their books. Settle down with their materials and read both what they write and what they did not write. Read between the line. Catch the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Catch the spirit behind it. Catch that thing that is behind the whole thing and see something begins to happen to you to move you in that direction. Are you following me? So Daniel went into study. Daniel began to learn. And then, in learning, he developed skillfulness. Proverbs 12, verse 8 says, A man is commended according to what? His wisdom. Proverbs 12, verse 8. A man is commended according to his wisdom. According to his wisdom. In other words, you are going to stand out based on the level of your wisdom. You are going to stand out based on what? So if you want to stand on this, we'll make sure you get what? And get what? Understand. If you want to stand out for good, sometimes people stand out for their foolishness. But that's, <laughs> that's the bad kind of standing out. But I can tell you, one thing I've learned, I've learned anywhere, I've experienced it, you see, sometimes when you enter into a place, you enter into a place, your mouth is shut, everybody's talking and everything. They look, they might look down on you. But the moment you open your mouth, if you have been infused with the wisdom of God, the moment you open your mouth, everything just changes. You can be like that. You can be like that, but it doesn't just happen. You have to sit with it. You have to learn. You have to put those things inside yourself so that in any place where you find yourself at work or anywhere, when you open your mouth, people will turn in that direction and say there's wisdom that is flowing in that place. That comes by study. A man is commended according to his wisdom. Amen. Ecclesiastes verse 8. Let's read it together. Who is like the wise and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face to shine. Hallelujah. And the hardness of his face is changed. A man's wisdom makes his face to shine. There's something about wisdom that just makes you shine. There's just something about wisdom that just causes your light to just shine and radiate. So I want to encourage you. I want to induct you. I know there are books all around. I saw Pastor Wilson is like that. I saw, when I went to his, to his office, I saw all his books. I took pictures of all of them, the ones that I have not read. I have the pictures in this place. I'm going to get this one. That's what I do everywhere I go. Don't just walk around this place and, you know, this is a manifestation of wisdom. Go, don't, don't. What did you learn? When I talk to my mentors, the next thing, what, what book are you reading now? If it's a book that I've not read, I'm going to get the same book and start reading it. Be a seeker of wisdom. And there are different ways that you can seek wisdom right now. You can do it through schooling, amen, understanding wisdom and knowledge by going to school. You can do it through books. Now you can listen to it on YouTube. You can listen to it on iTunes, on podcasts, and all kinds of stuff. But I want you to turn your, 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 your car into a university. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you are driving, turn it into a university because of what you are listening to. I know you like listening to some things and all that. That's okay. But turn your car into a university. Turn your room, a room in your house into a university where when you get in there, you are intermingling with wisdom in the area where God wants you to shine. Amen. Amen. That's what it's going to take. Even Jesus Christ, our example, they said they found him sitting with all the teachers and all the doctors asking them questions. And they were like, why are you doing this? At 12 years old, he said, don't you know I have to be about my father's business? So part of your father's business is knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Go for it. Amen. Amen. Let's, because of our time, let's move on. Let's move on. Amen. The next one, stand out. T, talent. 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 So, it is important for us to understand that each and every one of us, we have been given something by God that is supposed to help us to stand out. 
God did not start you with zero. In, in the parable of the talent in, uh, in Matthew chapter 25, the Bible talks about a man who was about to go on a journey and he gave some, some, some talent, talking about some money, gave five to one, gave two to one, and gave one to another. Five, when, the one that was giving five went to use it. The one that was giving two went to use it, produced two more. The one that was giving one did not use it. And the master came back and was like, why did, you know, give an account. The other people gave an account, he commended them, but that guy that didn't use it, that went to hate it. The master was not happy. And the master made a statement. He said, to anyone who uses well what they have, more will be given. But for to those who do not use what they have, even that which they have will be taken away from them. So the question is not whether you, you, know, you have something. There's something that God has given to you. The question is that are you putting those things to use? Because the master is going to come and then it's going to increase you based on your fruitfulness with what he has already given to you. So why I'm talking about talent is that you notice that there was something about Daniel. Daniel was not doing everything. But there were certain things that God gave him. In Daniel chapter 1 from verse 3 to 4, look at it. They, uh, they, they talked about some things that he had. They said, the king commanded Asphenas his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of nobility, youth without blemish, of good appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding and learning, competent to stand in the king's palace to teach them. So there was something they started with. Do you get what I'm saying? Before they now started going through the teaching. Right? In another place, Daniel 1.17, it says, as for these four youth, God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So question that I want you to ask yourself on this journey of developing an excellent spirit and of standing out is what has God given me? What is it? I tell people, don't look down on it. Some people want to look at spiritual stuff alone. Spiritual stuff are part of it. Do you get what I'm saying? But just Start from the natural. What is it that makes you unique? You see, your uniqueness is not your commonality with every other person. It's your differences. What is it that when people look at you, they usually call you for? Oh, can you help me with this thing? Because they know that you are very good at it. It could be that you are very good in relationship. You have people skills. Are you getting what I'm saying? It could be that you are very good in explaining stuff. You are very good in getting knowledge. It could be that you are very good in baking or creating stuff. Are you getting what I'm saying? Maybe you're a very good singer. Maybe you're very good in media stuff or in tech stuff. All these things were given to you by God for you to start your journey to standing out for his glory. But what most people do is that they pull those things aside and they are looking at what another person has. Forgetting what they have been given. You see, I'll tell you, anybody I meet, young and old, I tell them right now, I say, the, the journey to excellence, the journey to standing out is very simple. Find out what God has given you and begin to use it. Begin to pour it. Find out empty verses around you. Begin to pour it into them. Amen. Begin to serve in your church with it. Begin to bless people with it. Before you know it, that thing will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Before you know it, you'll be known for that thing. Don't look down on your gift. Don't Look down on the propensities and passion that God has put inside of you naturally. Go for them. Do an inventory of your life. Spirit, soul, body, relationships, skills, and all that. Do an inventory and put it all together. And say, okay, this is me. This is what makes me unique. This is what makes me different. And I'm going to commit myself to this. I'm going to stop trying to be like other people, but I'm going to start believing in myself. And that's how you begin to stand out. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. The next one, the hey, stand out. Hey, I'm going to move fast now because of some association. Association. I'm giving you principles to stand out in anything that God has put you. Association. Guys, this is extremely important. This is extremely important. It's one of the things that God has put into the way things work that if you understand it, your life will take on speed. You see, in life, you could either take the stairs or take the elevator. One of you will prefer stairs. If you want to do some exercise, sometimes the stairs good, <laughs> right? 
But when you understand that, you have to number your days so that you can apply your heart to wisdom. And you know where you are supposed to go that is going to take some distance. If you are given the elevator, please take the elevator along the way and not just try to take the stairs. There are people who say, I'm a self-made person. That's a lie. There's no self-made man. Everybody is made because of their interaction with other people. Somebody taught you A, B, C, and one, two, three. And that's why you're an accountant now. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you get it? So one of the mysteries of standing out and developing an excellent spirit is by working with excellent spirits. And that's what I call association. Everybody say association. association. Look at Daniel. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 17 to 18. Then Daniel went to his house and made the matter known to Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Is what? Is what? Is what? Is what? Is what? His companions and it and told them to seek mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that Daniel and his what might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon sometimes what stops you from being destroyed is your association is the people that you walk in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 whoever walks with the wise will be wise but a companion of fools will be destroyed or will suffer harm. If I want to know anybody that is going to stand out and fulfill their destiny, one of the things I do is I check the influence around them. I check the relationships that they keep. There are some people, just because of the people that they are working with, you know that they are going to succeed and to stand out. Because it has been proven that over five years, you are going to average out the kind of people that you work with, the, peop the books you read, amen, the association you keep. For those of you who have children, your children might have faults, they have all that, but the best, the place where you need to check the most is who their friends are. Because evil communication corrupts what? Good manners. Corrupt good manners. So, if their relationships are fine, the people that they are working with is fine. Even if they are faltering, right? They will, those people will lift them up to that level. Yes. But if they are great and good and their relationships are down, those people are going to pull them down to that level. Now, let's take it away from our children. And let's look at ourselves. Are you very strategic about your relationships? Do you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego around you? People that stand with you, people that pray with you, people that you learn with, people that have decided also that they're going to stand out with you, that they are not going to conform. I'm so glad I have Pastor Wilson and others in my life. I'm so glad I have people who will remind me of things that I said if I want to go back from those things that I said. Say, so remember when you said that. Remember when you preached that. I'm glad I have people that when I see what they are doing, I'm encouraged and I want to be better. Are you following me? You need to have those kind of people around you if you're going to stand out. You don't stand out alone. Hey, Amen. You say, if you see somebody at the top of the mountain, he didn't just arrive there. No. <laughs> somebody brought him there. And if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with people. That's why relationships should be something that you value. Jesus valued it. Let's look at this, uh, to, uh, this passage about the power of relationship. In Acts 4.13, they, they saw some uneducated guys, right? But they saw something else operating in their lives, and they came to a conclusion. He said, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were uneducated and common men, they were astonished, and they recognized that they had been what? With Jesus. What made a difference in their life? Who they had been with. So what you need to do on this journey of standing out, strategically choose to be with some people who carry wisdom, who carry grace. Amen? Strategically do that. Make that part of the things you do. And see what God is going to do with it. My time is almost over. Amen? So... <laughs> Let me, let me, I'll see if I can just give it to you. I may not be able to explain it all. Nobility, N, stand, N is nobility. Everybody say nobility. nobility. 
This has to do with character and integrity. You cannot compromise and take shortcuts. If you want to stand out for God, you can't take shortcuts. People will tell you, do it this way. Listen, please don't go in any way that is unethical or any way that is out of integrity and character because it will catch up with you eventually. Your gift can take you, right? Your gift can take you to places, but it only takes your character to keep you there. That's why we can't. Look at Daniel. I love what they said about him. They said in Daniel 6, 4 to 5, Then the high officials and the satraps sought to find ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could find no ground. Oh my God. For complaint or any fault. Because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. That's an example of an excellent spirit. I'm sure it wasn't perfect in that sense, right? Because nobody is perfect, right? But what, what the Bible is trying to tell us was that this man was walking in his integrity. He chose that. Man, I'm not going to come. Because in, people were going to trap him. In fact, they had to trap him with Bible stuff, with things that have to do with God. They had to make laws to trap him. But understand that the devil is going to try and trap you in your journey. But your decision to walk in integrity is what is, what is going to keep you. Uh, let's quickly look at the next one. Discipline. D. Stand. Discipline. And diligence. Discipline and what? Diligence. And diligence. Woo! <laughs> you see, one of the things I, I try to study in people who stand out, and it's one of the principles, is that you will notice that people who stand out in any field, they have certain habits that they repeat over and over. Do you guys get what I'm saying? So I like studying their habits. That, you know, someone said it this way, the secret of your future is in your daily routine. So when you think about the future, it's not future, future, it's now. What you are doing with it now. If you sleep out throughout the whole day, you are, wait, you are preparing for a sleepy future. Amen. It focus on managing one day at a time, like just one day, two days, and all that. Just keep on doing that. And then what happens? You will see that life begins to go in a particular direction. So, you know, I caught this in the life of Daniel. When I studied in Daniel 16, they said, when Daniel knew that a document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chambers towards Jerusalem and he got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to God as he had done previously. So it wasn't just that time that you said, I'm going to pray. He had been doing it three times, three times, three times, three times, three times, every day, three times, every day. This was one of the secrets of Daniel for standing out. He had empowering habits. He had discipline. He had diligence. Amen. Proverbs 22 verse 29. Do you see a man who is diligent in his business? He shall stand. <laughs> or stand before kings and not before what? Me men. In other words, listen, to stand out, it is a compounding thing. Life is compounding. Life is compounding. You know, a lot of people want to do something. They do it for maybe one week and then, oh yeah, they're looking for the result. But life does not work that way. Life works when you decide that I am going to keep on doing it day in and day out. Cast your bread upon the waters and after many days it will come to you. Give a portion to several for you do not know what evil will come upon the earth. If a tree falls to the ground, there it lies. And when the clouds are full of rain, they fall and empty themselves upon the earth. In the morning sow your seed. In the evening do not withhold your hand. For you know which one may prosper. Either this or that. That's uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, right? From verse 1. So basically, it's telling us that the way we live life is you don't do things for just a small period of time. You keep repeating things. Do you get what I'm saying? You keep on doing it. You keep on doing it. You keep on doing it. Do not be weary in well doing, for in due season you will reap if you do not faint. So develop the habit. I tell people, if you want to stand out, start developing the habit of somebody who stands out when nobody knows you. While you are still in the dark, act as you would like to act in the light. 
while it is still night, right? When everything is still covered up, act as you would like to act in the day. Because seed time and harvest will not cease, day and night. That's the cycle. So act, practice greatness every day in little things. Practice excellence every day in little things. In your room, everywhere, everywhere you go, practice greatness. In the way you treat people, in little things. Practice, great, practice great every day. Make it a habit of yourself. And you will see what God is going to do. Opportunity. Oh, opportunity. Quickly, opportunity. I saw that Daniel understood opportunity. And this is one of the principles of being able to stand out. You know where I saw that? How is it possible for a man to serve under this first king, to serve under, you know, the, the second one and the third one, and to stay there? You know, let me, let me I'm, I'm going to talk about the, you know, because of time, talk about two together. So the next one is updating, you know, in the standout. So opportunity and updating. So I noticed one thing that Daniel, his life, is standing out was actually because God gave him certain opportunities before certain people. You could summarize Daniel's breakthrough and standing out to these opportunities. Opportunity to leave Babylon. Sorry, to leave Israel and come to Babylon. You know, that was a misfortune. War came to your country and then you find yourself, you were carried away to Babylon. But you know that if Daniel had stayed in Israel, we wouldn't know his name now. So I want to encourage somebody right now. Maybe you lost your business. Maybe you lost your family. Maybe you lost something, right? That can be an opportunity for you to stand out. Even misfortune doesn't stop us. War did not stop them. All things work together for the good of those who love God. And who are called according to his purpose. That's why you don't let disappointment stop you. I know you may have failed in the past, but I'm telling you that that failure is what God is going to turn out to your greatest testimony. Amen. Failure is an opportunity to fail forward and to stand up again. Amen. Amen. So misfortune. Opportunity to be chosen as one of the children that will be trained. Your education is an opportunity. Opportunity to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dream when nobody could interpret it. God will give you certain opportunity to use your gifts, right? In a place. Opportunities to stand up for God without compromising when everybody was bowing down to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. And then opportunities to interpret the writing on the wall. His life was made up of little, little, little opportunities that God gave him. Amen? Amen. So look out for the opportunities that come to you and go for it. Everybody say, go for it. Make the most of every opportunity. Redeem the time. And then I talked about updating. Paul, sorry, sorry, Daniel continually, continually updated himself. Because for you to work with certain kings of different generations and still continue to work with all of them, from uh, Nebuchadnezzar to Bethesda and so on, there was something that Daniel was doing. Do Daniel studied each of those seasons and it never became stale. I want you to understand that the moment you become stale, you start becoming irrelevant. Can you imagine right now? Look at this church right now. We are recording. We have all these things, you know. We are projecting. We are doing all that. Can you imagine if we're still using, uh, <laughs> like we come into this place, and we're still using cassette. And we're, do you get what I'm saying? We're still using those. You have to keep updating yourself. Some of you, you got your degree several, many years ago, and you've never gone back to refresh it. No, go back and refresh. Keep yourself updated. You don't need to go to a school where you've got to pay money. You can, like I tell you, there are so many ways you can learn on the internet right now for free. Do you get what I'm saying? But keep yourself updated. What's the next, what's, what's going on right now? What's the next trend? Amen. What is it that God, how is it that God is moving in this world again? How is it moving in the area that God has called me right now? Put yourself in there and learn it. Because it's going to help you to be sustained. And then the final one. I think I got stand out, right? Yeah. The final one is trust. Everybody say trust. Yeah. That's what I want to, this is the most important of everything that I've told you. That's the most important. Because the Bible says in Psalm 75 from verse 6 to 7, that promotion does not come from the east or from the West. But it is God 
who executes judgment. Psalm 75 from verse 6 to 7. Putting down one and lifting up another. It's not of him that wills, it's not of him that runs, but it's God that shows mercy. That's why you will notice that throughout Daniel's life, there was one thing that was constant there. It was his trust in God. In chapter 1, and God gave Daniel wisdom and understanding. In chapter 2, and Daniel called his companion together and they beseeched God, show us the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. In Daniel chapter 3, we will not bow. Even if you throw us into the fiery furnace, we will not bow. Because if our God is able to deliver us. In the next one, Lions then, he went to pray to God. When they made the law. And he trusted that if they put him in the lions, then God was going to protect him. And God came to protect him. The fourth man came and protected him. Amen. Everybody say, trust in God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I want you to know that of all the things that I've talked about today, they are very important for standing out and developing an excellent spirit. But the most important of all is a relationship with God. It's an ongoing relationship with the Holy Spirit. And the Lord who teaches you to profit. And I will guide you in the way that you should go. I'm the Lord. I'm the one. He told Abraham, I will make your name great. I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you. God is the lifter of men. God is the lifter up of our heads. And that's why our lives must be dedicated to him. That's why we must trust him and walk by faith. I want to encourage somebody in this place and tell you, no matter where you are right now, no matter what you're going on right now, no matter how far you might be from the dream of God for your life, I want to let you know that the God you serve is committed to that dream. And he has yet to disappoint anyone that put their trust in him. He said, those who, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. For God is no respecter of persons, but every man in any nation that, that trust him or that acknowledges or calls upon him is rich unto all. I want you to know that no matter where you are right now in this conference, if you will today submit yourself to God, if you have not given your heart to Jesus, you give your heart to him. If you have, you recommit yourself and consecrate yourself to him and say, Lord, I hear today that I've been called to be your light and to stand out. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I don't know what to do next. Help me. I don't know where to go next. Help me. I can tell you that God will show up to help you. Can we pray about, can we pray today? Come on, let's rise up on our feet right now. And let's call upon God. I want you to lift up your hands, everyone, right now. You can play something softly there. I want you to lift up your hands right now to the Lord. Oh, and just ask God right now and say, God, help me. Help me, help me. Come on, lift up. Help me. You know, there are people in this place. I know, the, you know, I've been talking about different things. Some of you that, that you have tried and failed. You have fished and caught nothing. Oh, you, you, you had that energy. You had that, that, that tenacity. But the circumstances of life have taken it away from you. Oh, somebody here, they've told you that it is no longer possible. The devil tells you you are too old. The devil tells you you are too young. The devil tells you that you have failed too much. I'm here to announce to you that you call upon the name of the Lord. He will take you from where you are right now to where he wants you to be. His spirit will guide you, will lead you. There's an anointing and a grace for standing out. There's an anointing and a grace that lifts off people. And I came with that anointing today. And I'm going to proclaim it over everyone in this place. I'm going to say in the name of Jesus that from this day forward, God himself will begin to position you in the place that he has ordained for you. Today will be the least that you will ever be. In the name of Jesus Christ who sent me to you today. Today will be the least that you have ever been. For something will begin to work upon your life right now beyond yourself. For it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord. I prophesy over you right now. Begin your journey of goodness in a new level. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin your journey standing out of excellence. I declare in the name of Jesus that the excellent spirit is released in this place right now. The excellent spirit is revealed in this place right now. No longer will you be hindered by your past, by your background, by your education, by your race, by your experience. In the name of Jesus, from this day forward, go forth and be all that he has called you to be. I prophesy divine relationships over you right now. Divine connections. Connections beyond where you are right now. Into the places where you need to be. I declare in the name of Jesus that from this day forward, divine orchestration. Divine orchestration of wisdom, of knowledge, of relationships will begin to take place in your life. Rise up in your understanding. Rise up in your wisdom. Rise up in the grace of God. It's time for you to stand out. It's time for you to stand out. I prophesy over every business in this place. Every ministry in this place. Every calling in this place. Rise up and be who God has called you to be. Stand out for the glory of God. I speak over the gathering of the saints in the name of Jesus. You are the mountain of the Lord's house. Exalted above all other mountains. And all nations shall flow unto you. Many will say, let us come here. And let us learn of the wisdom of God. And they will come. This shall be a house of prayer for all nations. In the name of Jesus. Stand out. Stand out in this city. Stand out in this nation. Stand out in this generation. By the grace of God. I prophesy supernatural increase from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. People come in here, people with skill and understanding to lift up this mission in the name of Jesus. Destiny help us. We all come into this place in different areas. All the streams of God, all the creativity of God is found in this place. I prophesy over the children in the name of Jesus. They are for signs and for wonders. They are for signs and for wonders. The hand of the Lord is upon them. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Rise up financially. Rise up in your career. Rise up in your marriage. Stand out for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. Come and lift your hands and just begin to praise the name of the Lord right now. Give him some praise.